Namo Sakyang Muni Buddha. Today I welcome you to our regular service for the English speaking people. I used to do two service on Sunday, uh, one in the morning for the Vietnamese uh, Buddhist member, and at uh, <coughs> noon time for the uh, American member. But recently I didn't do it. The reason is I hurt my back. I with the, uh, the young monk, Junior Wang Quang Chi. <clears throat> He's young, but I'm old. I, I, I just still think I'm pretty strong. So I carry some big pot of flour with him, about four times up and down. I break my T12, my uh, 36 by 12. It uh, hurt a little bit, so I stopped doing the <clears throat> English chanting. The reason it takes too long for me, you know, many hours. But now I go back to it again with you again. Okay, so I welcome you. <clears throat> we have overall over 1,000 English speaking members from the long time. I was from the old temple on the east side of town. I was there for almost 20 years and then <clears throat> since uh, 2006, we moved here. So we're in this location for almost about 14 years, the new location here. And you see that we built a new shrine. It's much better <coughs> for the member. My philosophy is this one. We try monk and nun. We try to work and make some money we bring back to help the temple. I work, I wanna, I'm a, a doctor, I'm a physician, I'm a medical doctor. I still practicing. I've been practicing for almost uh, 60 years. I still practicing, I practicing in San Antonio about 40 years. And Master Quang Chi, he's working for the bank too. And the nun, she's working too. So three of us, we bring the money back <coughs> to help the temple. We try to be self-sufficient. In many other temples, the Vietnamese temple, they have 2,000 in the country. They do a lot of <clears throat> business type. They sell food, they sell the service, everything. We don't do it. We do everything here free. Because the way we feel like a Buddhist way. Because Buddha never charged anybody for any teaching, anything. He lived very frugal life, very simple life, and he served. And Buddha say this one, you should remember the best way to worship is to serve the human being, the human fellow, okay? It's not do the chanting, do something. We have to do the 10 good deeds. We have to behave as a good Buddhist person. What is a good Buddhist person? It's a good citizen, the one who serves your neighborhood, your society, your country. That's uh, the good Buddhist person. <clears throat> it's not try to go out to make money. They have different ways to make money. I discussed with uh, Master Quang Chi, we can do it. We can raise a lot of money, we can do a lot of things. They do like uh, some, um, they, have, they invite some singer, some actor, actress, and they raise, uh, they do make a lot of money, we don't do it. And we don't charge anything. Everything here, the people come in, it's their goodwill. They put in the uh, donation book. We never ask for money. We never take any money in our pocket. Just for the maintenance of the temple or the building a temple. We spend a lot of money to buy this uh, land and to have this one. This one is a small house. We enlarge it, make it bigger like now. Now we will be a new shrine, much bigger. So to accommodate uh, our member. And Master Quang Chi, he tried to open a library of the, our expenses, get a lot of books. We can get thousands of books for the people to come in here. They can loan the book, they can read and bring back for the other people can use it. Everything is free of charge. That's the way we want it. In our dream, I discussed with him, we can open the monastery, so we can train more 
American monk, American nun, to serve the American Buddhist member. Because we, we realize it's the, the U.S., we need to serve the people. The Vietnamese people, we don't have very many. In this town, we have about over 4,000, very few. In <coughs> California, they have a million. In uh, Houston, they have about 350,000. There are a lot of Vietnamese there. So they have a lot of Vietnamese temples. But in here, we have all over 4,000. So the Bear County, we have over 5 million. The San Antonio, over 1 million. Bear County, over 5 million. So we need to serve that. So I discussed with uh, Master Quang Chi, we need to open a monastery so we can train. And in the future, I discussed with him too, we can open uh, a uh, university, a uh, Buddhist university, we train undergraduate, like a four years for bachelor degree, to help the people study Buddhism and to train more um, <clears throat> monk and nun. That's our dream, okay? So I hope that we can make it. And I'm, I'm going to be 83. I still have a good health. I'm still working. I want to work at least 10 more years to make this temple stable financially and everything to be better for the future generation, for Master Quan Chi and the nun, they can run it. They can recruit more young monk and nun. So make this one, it's an American temple for everybody. That's uh, our dream. So today, before we go to chanting, I do some Dhamma talk to you before <clears throat> we go to chanting. Now join me to invoke the name of our teacher, Sakyamuni Buddha. Namo Sakyamuni Buddha. Namo Sakyamuni Buddha. Namo Sakyamuni Buddha. The one I talk to you today is a practice of Buddhism. First, I want to praise you, all of you, <clears throat> to have a will to study Buddhism. Buddha say this way, Buddha, you have two blessings in life. The first blessing, to be born as a human being. Because human beings, they have the intelligence. They can elevate themselves, okay? Animal, they're intelligent, but they don't have that capability. Don't think they're pretty intelligent. Chimpanzee, okay? They are intelligent. Dog, cat, intelligent, but they don't have that special capability like a human being to elevate themselves, okay? So we are lucky to be, to be born as a human being. The second blessing is to meet the Dharma, the, the teaching of uh, Buddha. The teaching of Buddha, the more you read it, is wonderful, wonderful teaching. It teaches about love, okay? It's no, not hypocrisy or nothing, okay? <clears throat> Some people, they said love, they serve uh, God, and they kill on the name of God. They kill on the name of Allah, something, you know? They're very, very fanatic, okay? In Buddhism, it's very open-minded. Buddha never talked down about our other religion. He never said we are the best, we are the best religion. He said, no, any religion you practice, you're a good person. It's a good religion. Just practice love. Love is essential for the human being. You know, if you practice love, you are a good person. You don't have to be Buddhist. And in, in Buddhism, you don't have to be Buddhist to come in the temple. You can come anytime you want. It's open. The door is open for everybody. We open to serve everybody. It's not only you are Buddhist, you can get in. No, you don't have to. Okay? So it's a very open-minded. And what is love? Love is very essential. You see, love is so natural. If you observe it, you see love ubiquitous, 
It's very natural. You look at the animal, when they're small and young, they love each other. You can put a dog and cat together, they never fight. You look there, <clears throat> the small animal together, they don't fight, they kill each other. When they get big, they start fighting, they kill each other. Human being, the same thing. When you put the kid, the infant, the children, the white, the black, the color kid, they love each other. They have no discrimination. They love each other. They play each other like a brother and sister. When they grow up, the society teach them how to discriminate, how to hate it. Hate is very unnatural. It's artificial. Love is natural. You see it, you can watch it. You watch all around you. Love is very natural. It's very, very, very natural. It's normal way. So hatred is artificial. People make the people. They learn how to hate how to discriminate, how to kill, how to hurt each other. But love is very natural. So go back to love. And Buddha teach two kinds of love. The first love, loving kindness. What's a loving kindness? You treat everybody like your old family, like your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, your ancestor. You love. You don't discriminate. You didn't see your neighbor. You didn't see that neighbor is different from you. You treat them like your family. Society is the same thing. In the world, the same thing. Okay? We, we call different names, you know. And you see this one. When you first, the first human race, if you look at the, the uh, Catholic Bible, yeah? you come from Adam and Eva. you same family. And after that, you grow and you go to different continent and you have a different and the sun the sun the uh, make the color of the skin different you live the in the temperate climate cold climate you don't have a sun you're white you go to the tropical area you're exposed to sun darker and darker you become black we become color so the same we come from the same Group of people, we migrated. And all the human beings, we come from the same, okay? We, we should love each other. We should practice labor, loving kindness. That's very natural, you know. If we, we understand that, we understand we, we like a family. We treat everybody like the same family. If you treat the older people like your father, your grandfather, you love them. If you treat the woman, she's older than, than you, like your sister, your mother, your grandmother, you love them. The younger people, like your young brother, young sister, like your young sister, you love them. They have no discrimination. They have no hatred. Okay? That's the loving kindness. Treat that way. You feel that way, you know, and you feel in, you live in harmony. And what's a loving compassion? Loving compassion, you help somebody, they are needed. They are needed, we help them. But we help them with love and respect, not contempt, not with like a pity on them. I said, oh, well, you look down on them. You give them something, look down on them. I said, oh, you're a wimp, you're a nerd, you're lazy, you're stupid, and help them. No, it's not that way. When you help your father, your mother, your ancestor, you help with respect, with love. When you help your brother, your sister, you help with love. It's not a loving compassion. So when you do it, you love, always love with compassion. Look at something, you know, you share, like uh, your old family. No discrimination. No then despise them. Then treat them like uh, pitiful, okay? That's the best way. So love is it's very important. If you live with love, you make society very peaceful, very good, and you feel that way. You grow with love. So that's the way Buddha teach you, okay? 
You know, some people, they blame Buddha. Oh, he deserved his family, his wife, his uh, only son uh, to go out to become a monk. No, he loved his uh, wife and his uh, son, and he loved everybody. He wanted to be good to everybody, not only to his wife and his son. He had everything. He's a prince, okay? He can stay home. He can practice the uh, Buddhism at home. No, he go out. He show the people how to live, how to, you know, from a normal person and live with <coughs> in poverty. And uh, later on, he get old, he age and sickness. Everything he live like a normal person. So he showed to us, you know, you can do like him. You can try like him. There's nothing special. He's not born like a, a dignity or, or like a deity. No, he born like, a, like all of us, a mortal. And he practice it. So the nice thing about Buddhism, the effort, the perseverance, he can be it. I praise the Master Kuan Chi. I said, admire him. Come from young. He have a future. He have a... <coughs> Bachelor, he have a master degree. He finished graduate school. He can make good money. I can get married, can have a, a life at home. No. You get everything out and become going the monk. Get a, a monk life. A lot of sacrifice. Sleep little, eat little, work more. But that life. And they have a, we talked to today, a one American monk. He's a white uh, monk, okay? He named Han Shua. He come from high class family. His father is a practicing Catholic and he's a lawyer, very wealthy. And one day he go to San Francisco with his fiance. They preparing for the wedding. He go through that temple, that one <coughs> 10,000 Buddha temple. Suddenly he feel it. He said, I don't want to get married anymore. See, he apologized to his fiancée and said, I'm sorry, I want to become a monk. So he go in, he asked the Chinese uh, monk, the senior monk there, I want to be a monk. The Chinese monk said, no, you cannot. He said, why? First thing, you're white. Second thing, you're rich. Third thing, you're highly educated. It's very difficult to become a monk. Monk live a poor life, very simple life. I don't know we can do it. He said, I can do it. I want to be a monk. He said, I give you challenge, okay? I said, what kind of challenge? I said, if every three step you bow down, you don't bow to anybody. It's no superstition. You don't bow to anybody at all. You bow to yourself, to you. Buddha nature, okay? You practice modesty, humility. He said, but from where? He said, from this temple to Seattle, 1,900 miles, you see? And he did it. He did for three years. Three steps, bow down. People think, oh, you're crazy. Why you do it? He said, I bow to myself. I practice modesty, humility. I practice it. Self-control. And <clears throat> when it get cold, he still keep on going. Go on highway, keep going. At night, maybe find some place to rest a little, and during the day, do it. Just keep doing it for over three years. It's amazing. Now he become a monk. Now he's a pup in his uh, late 60s, I guess. And he's in practice in San Francisco, OK? And he's a wonderful monk. Now he speak fluently Chinese. He do Dharma teaching in Chinese and in English, yeah, for sure. Okay? But a very good monk, extremely good monk. So I told uh, Master Kuang Chi, he said, try to be a good monk, OK? And this temple is a his temple. So I tell him, you know, you have to take care of this temple. And you have to open the door for many young American men and women. So they come in, they practice, they go out, they help other people.
because uh, <coughs> Buddhism is a religion of love. That's all. Okay? Somebody asked the um, Dalai Lama, what's your religion? He said, religion of kindness, that's all. You know, it's a religion of kindness. Try to be very kind. Try to be sincere, okay? Practice sincerity, and you will be a good person. That's all you have to do, okay? That's the uh, one I talked to you today, and we welcome you, okay? And the temple, if you see the temple, it's your temple. It's a commune property. You take care of that. Hopefully, we get over the uh, pandemic sooner or later. Maybe this year or next year, maybe the end of this year or the beginning of next year, we have a vaccine. Maybe, okay? We have uh, the pandemic under control and we open like before and we have more people come in. And I like the people young like you, you know. It's amazing, okay? The people, the young, they come to Buddhism. It's uh, wonderful, wonderful. You understand it. You bring your knowledge to help the other people. This is wonderful, okay? You can do how much you can do. And you do not only for Buddhism, for society, for our nation, for the human race, for the world, okay? That to do it, do it. And I see so many white people, they practice Buddhism now. They say that, <clears throat> now about 10 years before they said over, 20 million Americans, they practice Buddhism, I think probably now, 30, 40 million. In uh, Australia, it's a very strong religion now in Australia, in New Zealand, in Europe, in Germany, in England, in France. So many now, because people go in there, they feel very peaceful, they feel love, they have no violence. Okay? In Buddhism, very strange to see, in Buddhism, the people, they get killed, they didn't kill. They didn't kill back. The other religion, they killed back. They said self-defense. In Buddhism, we don't believe in self-defense. If I get killed, or Master Kuang Chi get killed, it's our karma. Maybe last life we kill, so this life somebody take our life away. But we didn't kill back. If you kill back, you generate another bad karma. It go from one generation to the next generation. Okay, you look at the, uh, like uh, in the Zen tradition, there's a certain patriarch, he named Hoi Kha. He is very good in fencing. When he retired, get out. The uh, gangster, they surround him. He stay there, they let kill him. People, why you don't defend? He said, I can defend, I can kill all of them easily. But I do that, my karma is there, okay? Because last life, I killed them. So this life, I have to give back my life to them. I do not want to do it. If I do it, I kill them, the karma is still there. I never get over that. So he stays there. And people kill him, and he take it. It's no problem. Okay? You have to pay the karma. But if the philosophy to self-defense, kill the other people, we don't believe in that. We don't believe in self-defense. We don't believe in kill, you know. Thief for thief, you know, eye for eye. We don't believe that. We believe it. It has to be love. It has to be. You have, if you believe in karma, you believe in cause and effect, everything explain it. Everything, look at that. Everything in life is cause and effect. If you're a good student, you study well. You make good grade, cause and effect. If you don't study and make bad grade, Cause and effect. You cannot blame your teacher. Oh, he didn't teach me well. Oh, my friend didn't teach me. Oh, they didn't help me in my homework. Oh, my parents didn't help me. No, only you. In Buddhism, you are responsible. Okay? Self-discipline and self-dependence. Don't, don't say that it's somebody else. It's us, we do it. We have to do it ourselves. That's the Buddhism. That's my talk today, <clears throat> and if you have any, any question, I try to answer your question.
If you don't have any question, we transfer the merit and we go to chanting. Namo Sakya Moni Buddha. Namo Sakya Moni Buddha. Namo Sakya Moni Buddha. Any positive karmic action we accomplished today, we want to transfer to everybody and wish them the alignment. We go to the uh, regular practice. Okay. with a general service. We go to the uh, general practice, general service. <coughs> Speech and mind and perfect oneness, I send my heart along with the sound of the bell. May the hear awaken from forgetfulness and transcend all anxiety and sorrow. Listen, listen, this wonderful sound brings me back to my true home. In gratitude we offer this incense to all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas throughout space. Time may it be fragrant as earth herself reflecting our careful left. Our wholehearted mindfulness and the fruit of understanding slowly ripen. May we and all beings be companions of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. May we Waken from forgetfulness and realize our true home. Incense in the center now is burning all the Dharma realm in every auspicious clouds appearing our sincere intention thus fulfilling as all buddhas now show their perfect Bid you the incense cloud canopy bodhisattva and grain bodhisattvas We bow together. This is phenomenal. Midshu the eternally abiding Buddhas, the supreme Dharma, and sagely sung throughout the Dharma realm and the realm of empties and three periods of time. Fundamental teacher Shakyamuni Buddha Manjushi Great Teacher Buddha Manjushi Great Wisdom Bodhisattva Universal Great Conduct Bodhisattva 
All Dharma guiding Deva Bodhisattvas and the Magic Mountain Assembly of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Amitabha Buddha in the land of ultimate Avarokiteshvara, great compassion, Bodhisattva, great strength, Bodhisattva, earth story, great vow, Bodhisattva, and the assembly of great pure sea like Bodhisattva. Mantra. You give Kapash Mantra, thousand hands, thousand anger, like this. Namo Ratna Trayaya, Namo Arya Havalo Kita Shabaraya, Bodhisattvaya, Mahasattvaya, Mahakarunikaya, Om Savarabhati. Sudanastasya Namaskritva Namanarya Avarokita Shabara Rantava Dakanta Shri Mahapata Shami Sarvadata Shobam Hajiyom Sarvasatva Namo Pasava Namo Peace, I have smile is 
born on my lips, this is anew, and I vow to go through it in mindfulness. The sun of wisdom has risen, shining in every direction, noble Sangha Dilish. Bring your mind into meditation, Namo Shakyamona Ye Bodhaya, Namo Shakyamona Ye Bodhaya, Namo Shakyamona Ye Bodhaya. Who bows in the one who is bowed to are both by nature empty, therefore the communication between them is inexpressibly perfect. Our practice center is the net of Indra reflecting all things everywhere as my own person reflects in all Buddhas to whom with my whole life I go for refuge. Bring light in the ten directions, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, to whom we bow in gratitude. And living the way of awareness in the very midst of suffering and confusion, Shakyamuni, Buddha, the awakened one, to whom we bow in gratitude. Through ignorance, awakening our hearts and our minds, Manjushri, the Bodhisattva of great understanding, to whom we bow in gratitude. Mindfully working joyfully for the sake of all beings, Samantabhadra, the Bodhisattva of great action, to whom we bow in to suffering, serving beings in countless ways of Adokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva of great compassion, to whom we bow in gratitude. Awakening and loving kindness in children, sprouts and all beings, Maitreya, the Buddha, to be born to whom we bow in gratitude. The way fearlessly and compassionately, the stream of all our ancestral teachers, to whom we bow in gratitude. By his deep and lovely, we now have a chance to see it and practice. We vow to realize its true meaning. Bodhisattva Havalokita, while moving in the deep course of perfect understanding, shed light on the five skandhas and found them equally empty after this pen. He overcame ill being, listen, Chari Pudra, form is emptiness, emptiness is form, form is not other than emptiness, emptiness is not other than form, the same is true with feelings, perceptions, formations, and consciousness, listen, Chari Pudra, all dharmas are marked with emptiness, they are neither produced nor destroyed, neither defile nor immaculate neither increase increasing therefore in emptiness there is neither form nor feelings no perceptions nor mental formations nor consciousness no eye or ear or nose or tongue or body or mind no form no sound no smell no taste no touch no object um, of elements no interdependent origins and no extinction of them, no ill-being, no cause of ill-being, no end of ill-being, and no path.
Look your name, have a locate Shvara. We aspire to learn your way of listening in order to help relieve the suffering in the world. You know how to listen in order to understand. We invoke your name in order to practice listening with all our attention and open heartedness. We will sit and listen without any. Sit and listen without judging or reacting. We will sit and listen in order to understand. We will sit and listen so attentively that we will be able to hear what the other person is saying and also what left unsaid. We know that just by listening deeply, we already alleviate a great deal of pain and suffering. And the Look your name, Manjushri, we aspire to learn your way, which is to be still and to look deeply into the heart, and into the hearts of people. We will look with all our attention and open-heartedness. We will look with unprejudiced eyes. We will look without judging or reacting. We will deeply so that we will be able to see and understand the roots of suffering through the impermanent and selfless nature of all that is. We will practice your way of using the sword of understand to cut through the bonds of suffering, thus freeing ourselves and other species. Your name, Samantha Bhadra, we aspire to practice your vow to act with the eyes and heart of compassion, to bring joy to one person in the morning, and to ease the pain of one person in the after. We know that the happiness of others is our own happiness, and we aspire to practice joy on the path of service. We know that every Every look, every action, and every smile can bring happiness to others. We know that if we practice wholeheartedly, we ourselves may become an inexhaustible source of peace and joy for our loved ones and for all species. Book your name, Shitty Garba. We aspire to learn your way of being present where there is darkness, suffering, oppression, and despair, so we can bring light, hope, relief, and liberation to those places we are determined not to forget about or abandon. Those in desperate situations, we will do our best to establish contact with those who cannot find a way out of their st- Those whose cries for help, justice, equality, and human rights are not being heard. We know that hell can be found in many places on earth. We will do our best not to contribute to creating more hells on earth and to help transform the hells that already we will practice in order to realize the qualities of perseverance and stability so that like the earth we can always be supportive and faithful to those in name. Take refuge in the Buddha, the one who shows me the way in this life. I take refuge, the Dharma, the way of understanding and of love. I take refuge in the Sangha, the Kam. Unity that lives in harmony and awareness.
and the refuge of Buddha, I clearly see the path of light and beauty in the world dwelling in the refuge of Dharma, I learn to open many doors on the path of transformation. Dwelling in the refuge of Sangha, shining light that supports me, keeping my practice free. Refuge in the Buddha, in myself I aspire to recognize their own awakened nature, realizing the mind of love, taking refuge in the Dharma. In myself I aspire to help all people. Fully master the ways of practice and walk together on the path of liberation, taking refuge in the Sangha. In myself, I aspire to help all people build fourfold communities to embrace all beings and support their transformation. Reciting the sutras, practicing the way of awareness gives rise to benefits without limb. We vow to share the fruits with all beings. We vow to offer tribute to parents, teachers, friends, and numerous beings to give guidance and support along the path.